Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So this video is going to be a little bit more old school in the sense that my face is not on the screen, but it's going to be new school in the sense that after I'm done designing the car today in Automation, we're going to be taking it into BeamNG multiplayer and going up against Filmin86, or I guess working together perhaps, depending on how things go, to try and climb a rocky mountain. So stick around for that. Basically today though, I'm going to be designing and also creating a 90s off-road truck, I guess, in automation. And my basic idea for this is, uh, well, we didn't really give each other any restrictions, it was just kind of a theme. Uh, but I'm going to try to be semi-realistic, but I'm also just going to do whatever the heck I want to do. So we're going to give ourselves the best advantage we can here by going up to 1999. So it's still 90s, but it's the latest of possible 90s. So the cool part about this is now that we have our fancy new uh, alpha version of automation, which is getting better and better with every update, thankfully. There have been a few hot fixes since the last time we've seen it, but um, there are twin squirrel turbos as well, by the way. But it does allow us to modify the settings outside of the regular parameters, including making our off-road vehicle jacked to the absolute heck. Now, the idea is with this that I'm supposed to kind of make a 90s truck American style, but I was looking through these bodies and I'm into the 80s and I, like stuff like this would make an excellent off-road vehicle, but then I saw that they have a Land Rover <laughs> and I'm kind of like, you know what, let's make a Land Rover. Okay, I guess it is a bit of a Range Rover Land Rover, but it'll be fine. I have made a body with this chassis before and it was bad uh, because it was made for speed. This time we're going for uh, off-road capability and that's pretty much it. So I'm going for a ladder chassis, actually maybe a light truck uh, chassis, <laughs> just it's going to be a truck base even though the Range Rover is theoretically not. Um, we'll go for a front longitudinal engine and the suspension is extremely important but basically no matter what I put on there I'm going to be fine anyways. Let's go maybe uh, <laughs> double wishbone in the front, independent front and then solid rear, is that a bad idea? Uh, you know what, we're, we're ruining things, uh, it's going to be leaf springs in the front and the back. So solid front axle, solid rear axle, it's basically a Jeep. Okay, the engine is extremely important uh, because obviously we want to make a decent amount of power, uh, but we also don't want to make too much power because if it's too powerful, it is not going to be drivable, which is a significant problem. Um, so 90 degree V8 was my first go-to, again, I think a V8 makes a lot of sense, but then I was like, hold on a minute. Let's make it a turbo in line 6, just to mess things up a little bit, and also because I haven't messed with the turbos very much in this update yet. And to be honest with you, the reason for that is because I'm afraid of them. <laughs> Legitimately afraid of the turbos. So it's a square engine, 3 liter, which I do like, uh, but I think I'm going to go specifically to make it a 4.5 liter. I don't know why, I just feel like a 4.5 would be fun. And we'll go single overhead cam with 4 valves, so it'll be a little bit more modern. So this engine bay has a lot of room, uh, we don't have to worry at all about its current size, but I ended up going for a, as I said, 4.5 liter, a little bit more stroke uh, than bore, so it's going to be more of a torquey engine than it will be a uh, high revving engine, which is fine. Uh, I'm hopefully going to have a lot of torque, that's what I want. Okay, let's go for harmonic dampener, and we'll just go for cast components for now, we'll up those as necessary and just keep things moving forwards. VVL and VVT I don't necessarily need, but again, uh, target horsepower here is maybe 250. It doesn't need to be super powerful. It, it should be fine at 250, I, I would hope. The thing is going to be heavy, but I don't think it'll be underpowered. Turbocharger, big boys. We got single or double, and we also got different types of boost control here. I haven't messed with that at all. And also twin scroll turbos, which is cool. So let's see what that looks like. By the way, uh, I'm skipping ahead a little bit because we now have turbo manifolds, including turbo race manifolds, which look awesome. <laughs> that is crazy looking. Uh, and there's also the short cast and the log style as well. So now there are options to make even crazier turbo engines. Just look at that thing. Man, oh man. For the purposes of this build, I'm going to stick with a short cast. The log just seems a little bit too straightforward, so it's short cast it is. Should we make it a twin turbo for no apparent reason? <laughs> so it's a, it's currently a twin scroll ball bearing twin turbo 4.5 liter V6. That's pretty darn cool. And by V6, I mean I6. 
Ah oh, man, it even says twin turbo on there. <laughs> that just makes me happy. The turbos themselves are really small, but this is one of those things that we'll just have to come back to and also be reading the graphs to uh, to make sure that they actually work. We could also go for non-intercooled turbos, but that's going to be weird, <laughs> so we'll see. Okay, so we have something going on that is uh, classically called <laughs> the engine is knocking. <laughs> Uh, and you can see what our torque and power would be NA now, which is very, very interesting. Basically, our turbo is causing us to have 46 horsepower and also be destroyed. Uh, theoretically, we could have 200 and maybe 10, maybe 225 there without a turbo. So my failings are obvious. I basically just skipped through this, but it's injection uh, with a mid intake. I decided mid would maybe be better. Um, performance mid, I, I don't know if that's even going to be necessary, uh, unleaded regular fuel, but obviously some things were going on, we're needing 110 Ron, we have not got anywhere near that. So when it comes to this compressor map, I must admit to you that I don't know how to read it. I'm going to assume that green is good because it appears to be higher efficiency, uh, and then versus pressure ratio, I would assume that based on just a quick reading that the, this is the sweet spot that we want to be in, but I don't know how that correlates to the blue line, so something to keep in mind for the future. However, it was way off before. It was like this, which has a little bit of a crappy explosive <laughs> JPEG on there, so I figured that's probably not good. I'm reeling it back in a little bit. And our torque and efficiency curve is all over the place as well. Uh, seemingly, we're making peak torque and efficiency around 3300 3, RPM, which is probably a little low. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of stuff here that I don't know very much about. This is very intimidating. Back over to the fuel mixture. Let's just increase this. This is the stuff that I know, at least kind of. <laughs> oh, she rich now, my goodness. 269 horsepower, and uh, every single thing is dying because it stops at 3000 RPM. There is something wrong with this engine. <laughs> Okay, so the pistons and stuff are being broken by high torque. Uh, basically, our torque is higher than what they can take, which is fine. It just means we're going to have to up to forge components. I hope that fixes it. Please fix it. Okay, thank goodness. And our crank is still causing issues, so billet steel, and that means we're making 592 horsepower. That is way more than I wanted, but my goodness, that is turbo leg to the nines. Goodness. I almost like the uh, non-turbo curve better because it's like, okay, we're building our power, building power, and then, oh, good lord, and then uh, we probably have flown off a cliff at this point, and uh, all this other stuff doesn't really matter. Yeah, I've accidentally created an 800 horsepower uh, in line 6, and I feel bad about it. <laughs> so let's turn this down uh, because obviously this is way too much. The mechanical stress being 31% seems like a decent amount. Uh, it does run right through the green, but then it goes straight past it into the abyss, so I'm assuming that's not ideal. Okay, I'm down to a much more respectable 400 horsepower. Uh, taking a look at this, our, our fuel mixture is way too high, uh, which is great. Um, so we can lower this down quite significantly. Our ignition timing, similar, so, similar story, but basically I just made the turbos even smaller. Um, so we don't need two turbos at all, but it is just kind of fun to have it. I'm going to limit myself to two inch exhaust. I know that that means that I am restricted in the uh, in this department, but it does also mean we have a much more respectable 332 horsepower. That might be a little bit too much, but I think I might just kind of settle for it. Uh, again, the power curve is drastic but <laughs> the torque does appear a little bit lower and uh, i'm gonna have to tune this specifically to make up for this ridiculous lack of torque at the beginning i think i'm gonna have to go for very short gearing to make up for this so we'll, we'll power through first gear and then second gear will be where we get all of our actual power that seems fine though 332 horsepower pretty decent uh <laughs> turbo in line six Conrads have a few issues, but I swapped them down to the uh, lightweight, and I think everything else here is going to be, yeah, just, just as is. D don't touch anything else, it's good. I genuinely never do this, but I just wanted to see what this engine sounds like, so here's a quick run-through. Oh 
Oh yeah, it's a diesel. <laughs> oh man, she definitely ripping. Okay, let's go for the four-door uh, Land Rover because I think that's cool. I know two-door is also cool, but four-door is more my style. Uh, so let's r rip it as is. Uh, we're going to be changing up the... Well, I think I might need to do some morphing. I'm not sure. <laughs> we do have the thing here to make it very approximate. What I'm thinking, though, is just wider fenders so we can get some decent width. And then uh, we'll be doing some more widening <laughs> once we get to the advanced settings. So what about if we made it dark green? <laughs> For no particular reason, uh, I actually don't mind this kind of dark green at all. Hopefully it looks good in beam. Let's go chrome uh, trim, although it's really, really bright. I'm going to make this chrome a little bit darker, maybe. Kind of like a gray chrome is much nicer. I really do like that a lot better. And the wheels, wow, we have a lot of options. <laughs> oh my goodness. Automation, like I said, it just keeps getting better and better. Uh, maybe just a classic steel wheel, perhaps? Just nice, simple steel, and then we'll have to make some adjustments. Okay, so something I'd like to do with a lot of my builds is, well, first let's pick some wheels, and then let's set up the stance, and then we'll design it. So my first inclination is to make the wheels as wide as they can possibly go at the moment, which is fairly wide and also quite fun. Uh, we can't get too much width out of them yet, but we'll be able to do that with the advanced settings. So that is 335s on the back and 315s on the front. I don't know if the game is going to make me change that. Currently we have um, maybe 17s. I like the look of the 18s, but I think maybe 17s be a little bit more... Ah, uh, you know what, heck it, we're going 18s, and uh, see if we can't just make these a little bit bigger. This is going to be an Icelandic <laughs> off-road car if it's the last thing I do. 840s, that is big. Check out that tire size. 900 is the way to go. Let's make them alloy wheels as well. I'm liking this. It's coming out decent. And if you're wondering what the balls-to-the-wall version of this looks like, it's uh, maximum width. <laughs> oh man, she thick. But uh, you can only go as wide as the fenders in base automation. But that's with 395s. Oh, man. <laughs> we would have no trouble in the snow, but I think that might be a little too much rubber for this course. Okay, time for some fixtures. If you're wondering what this bar here is, it's basically our recently used, which is uh, useful for the most part, but it's kind of just a big empty space there at the beginning. It'd be nice if this could be toggled in and out. I think that would be a good uh, little feature for the game. So we have a choice to either make this look like an actual Land Rover, uh, probably using lights similar to this, although uh, that being said, <laughs> that's maybe not quite right. Or I could potentially just make it my own design, which is often what happens anyways. Uh, so maybe <laughs> maybe just a hybrid. Let's do a hybrid. Now the car has a built-in bumper, uh, which is fine. I like it there. But we should try to get a little bit more aggressive if possible. And something I could totally do now that I'm thinking about it is uh, just run back over here to paint and get rid of the rear bumper because we can swap it out for something a little bit less like a chin. Okay, so I've kind of just been procrastinating a little bit, adding some different things like tailpipes and door handles, because none of the bull bars in here are particularly interesting. Again, I'm using just stock automation fixtures for this. I kind of figured that would be the best call as of now. I believe there are mods for the uh, alpha, but anyways. I think I might have to make my own bull bar, which is going to be fun. Um, so we may as well get started with that. Okay, there you go. A little bit of a bull bar there. I don't know if I'm done with that yet, but it's pretty cool, just kind of as is. It floats in the middle of nowhere, so that's maybe going to need to change, but it is a protective shield <laughs> against the inevitable downfall, which uh, which is going to be me smashing into something. Definitely some rocks that I'm going to hit, so maybe we'll take it a little bit further. <laughs> okay, that is much, much cooler and a little bit more developed. Plus, it allows us to put some fog lights in there too, uh, which is nice, so <laughs> that's what I'm going to roll with. It's a little weird, it's made out of exhaust, but uh, yeah, we officially have a front bull bar. I would like to repeat this same design on the back. And because I like things that are cool, I'm going to put a gigantic intercooler in the back, 
and just kind of angle it down. And now <laughs> you can kind of see our turbo roots there because big boy intercooler is hanging out just behind a grill and you can kind of see the engine through another grill. So overall, it's coming out pretty, <laughs> pretty darn sweet. Like this is better than I thought it would be. Let, let's be real honest, way better than I thought it would be. Okay, other than badging, the uh, front end is done. I need to write something across the front of this. I've handily called this Landy Rover, which is, uh, yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> but basically, we need some kind of lettering to denote what kind of beast this thing is. Obviously, we're gonna have a turbo badge on the back because twin turbos, <laughs> we, got, we gotta advertise that. <laughs> Landy Rover. <laughs> it looks kinda, um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna take out the Y. Okay, with the Y it looks a little bit better because then the R is in the middle. We got four letters over here, four letters over there. Land Rover. <laughs> okay, that's gonna have to do it. I wish it wasn't chrome, I wish I could change the color of it, but uh, I will just deal with this as is for now. Yeah, you know what, it's fine. It, it's Land Rover and then uh, because I can't just leave it there, I feel like we need to add that little bit of personal touch. I'm just gonna add turbo on uh, on this side as well. <laughs> just a little bit smaller, maybe lowercase, uh, just, just to put it in there. Actually, this one. There you go. Land Rover, Land Rover Turbo. It is the little details that make cars good, by the way. Uh, so this being an off-road beast, obviously we have our big impact bar on the front. Realistically, it does nothing, uh, and it means nothing. It is entirely just for show. Uh, but on the sides, we could have some bars as well, and I do want to do that. So uh, yeah, why don't I just do it? Okay, the truck has rock sliders now after I took a mail break. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta step back for a moment, think about it, and uh, make something cool. And that's basically what I think this is here. It's a little bit off, especially this one. I might have to fix that, but everything else is looking pretty nice. Now, again, I must reiterate that uh, these rock sliders don't make any sense because with them, you can't open the door, but they look cool, and that's all that I care about, so they're staying. Okay, there's the one I've made for the rear end. Uh, it looks a little bit derpy <laughs> with these lines here, so I'm gonna have to fix that, but... The basic core concept is there, where it's essentially just uh, just protecting the back up high. It doesn't need to protect much, just this kind of section. I don't want it to drag on any rocks, so that's why it's up here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Overall, this stuff is really fun, and uh, I'll definitely try to make some more of these in the future. Is it perfectly realistic to what would be plausible on a Range Rover? Probably not, but it's good enough for uh, automation and BeamNG as well. So taillights are difficult because I don't know at all what kind of taillights would go on this car. Uh, I should probably just look it up. Okay, I've got the back sort of wrapped up reasonably. I'm not sure what to do with the rest of this. <laughs> I guess we could put a fin on the top of it because it's supposed to be a Land Rover. Um, <laughs> and it's theoretically, I guess, a little bit fancier than normal cars? I don't know. Yeah, the fin is fine. Um, <laughs> overall, the back, I've been very careful to try and make it so that the brake lights and stuff actually work nicely, uh, so I'm very eager to see what that looks like in beam. Everything else is kind of done. I'm just going to go over it and add a bunch of small details, just little things. I'm not going to do an interior on this one, at least not yet. If you guys like it enough, maybe I'll do a part two on this video, but for now, I just want to bang this out and uh, see if it actually functions. If it works well, it's worth going after again. Okay, I decided that I actually am going to test this before we get into um, <laughs> the multiplayer session because I want to make sure that it actually drives. Uh, that's probably important. <laughs> That'll be the first thing. But secondly, I want to see how good it is off-road. So let's go 4x4 manual, 6-speed. Uh, currently, I've got it up to 270. It's I'm all 280, but it, it says it'll do 270. Our tire cost is uh, definitely making things <laughs> lesser in terms of top speed, but it doesn't really matter. Spacing is going to be extremely important. I'm actually going to lower down the spacing, uh, or raise the spac spacing, I should say, considerably. Uh, basically, that's just going to make our first gear a lot shorter, and our second gear as well. Uh, so that'll help us take off on the off-road. I want to have a decent amount of power in first gear. If we have super long gearing, it's not going to work out well for off-road because then we're not going to have a lot of torque in first gear. So we want that very high ratio in first gear. So that's what I'm going for. That puts it at 550 to 1. 
Uh, that is a very good ratio for crawling, so hopefully that'll work out. Uh, and a manual locker here as well. Tires, I believe you saw before, except I've modified it slightly. Chunky off-road, 35-35, and we'll balance it again for off-road once we get the specs going. Uh, vented discs, I don't know how much this is going to need, but I'm assuming it's going to need bigger discs than that, so we'll increase it and come back to this. Off-road skid tray, cooling flaps, maybe a little bit of brake airflow, nothing serious. And we'll just go for premium CD uh, weight again, not a huge factor with this, so it's just going to be kind of as is. Let's go hydraulic steering, it doesn't need any traction aids, and safety will just go advanced. It, it is going to be heavy, That's, <laughs> that is the kicker. We do have some options here to optimize our weight and our weight distribution. Uh, that is very important off-road, but I don't really know exactly how to weight a vehicle like this because it very much depends on the wheelbase and also the width, uh, which this doesn't have a ton of wheelbase, and, uh, which is a good thing. A shorter wheelbase is generally better, but uh, yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> it's going to just stay as is for now. Air suspension is what you would find on a regular Land Rover such as this, but I'm going to go standard, let's say they swapped it. Yeah, it's got double coil springs on it, so I think st standard suspension makes a lot of sense. Uh, we'll go gas, monotube, um, and then uh, semi-active sway bars, I wish I could just remove them. That is a lot of orange and red, but off-road budget is a little bit more where we're after. That is not bad at all, <laughs> it's just right there, that is decent. Our biggest issue being wheel spin, but that is to be expected. We have a very high uh, first gear, so th th it's going to spin the wheels no matter what. So regarding height, we could go up to be monster truck level. I'm kind of thinking, well, this is our base level, that's where we were. Monster truck, I'm saying in between is, is where we should sit. That is a good off-road stance, and I don't think we need that much more than that. Back to brakes, uh, braking at max load, it's not enough. Uh, that is definitely fine in the rear, but in the front that is not even close. Let's try six piston. Still not even close. <laughs> All right then. To make up for the lack of front braking ability, uh, I've decided to increase the size of them to be the max that they can be, including the front force up to 150. So it's a good thing we have 18 inch rims because that's the only reason we're allowed to get up to 375 in the size of the brakes. Um, but vented disc, four piston in the back, uh, with big discs, 80% force, they should hopefully make up for our failure in terms of the fronts, and uh, as well we can get a little bit going here just to get it up to a positive number at the braking at max load. That would be ideal. Okay, back over to the extremely important gearing graph because gearing is our biggest concern. Uh, wheel spin, <laughs> you can see, I believe that this is our rear force here, so that would be the, the worst of it, is in low speeds, which is good. Um, good and bad, it's only 21%, all of which is in uh, first and basically second gear there, which makes sense. Uh, it looks like we're going to actually be decreasing this, our top speed here, 245. The reality is that this is calculated with the car in rear wheel drive, so... Uh, once we put it in four-wheel drive, this shouldn't be as much of an issue. Uh, I think that having that very high, again, high ratio first gear is going to be a bonus for us in terms of the off-road capability. So I'm not going to compromise that in the name of wheel spin. I think overall in this tuning, it's good to go. The argument could be made that all-terrain tires are probably better for our cause. Obviously, they fix a lot of our issues. Uh, <laughs> which is good with the wheel spin thing is fixed because of it. But I feel like chunky off-road is a little bit more my style. I just want to go with the beefy, chunky off-road tires. The turning radius on this thing is going to be trash, but having such wide wheels, we should have grip for days. And with that engine, it's going to be torquey, that's for sure. Okay, taking a look through, this thing weighs a lot. Uh, it is 2,324 kilos most of which is in the front that makes me think that we should probably try and change the weight bias a little bit uh, where is that <laughs> uh, maybe we can put some of that towards the rear just to see if that helps um, because oh that's barely doing anything i'm going uh zero all the way to the rear and that kind of fixes our wheel spin issue a little bit so Maybe that'll help with us uh, getting over some obstacles. The front being heavier is good because then if you pop the front up by accident, like you just boom, then uh, it'll come back down and you won't be rear heavy. But 
we'll, we'll have to see if that changes things. I don't feel like committing to a full zero, so I'm going to put this up a little bit. There we go. 25 is the way to go. We could make it lighter overall. Um, this would take out actually a significant amount of weight. Wow, that would do a lot, but um, maybe we'll just keep it... Uh, Keep it up to, to 60 here. It is a little bit hefty as is, so that'll help. Okay, 335.8 horsepower out of a inline six. This thing does have mufflers on it, so it could be more powerful. It could be even crazier than it is, but all this is cast iron goodness, and uh, <laughs> this thing is gonna rip. It's been a long time coming. Let's take it into BeamNG for a quick test before the inevitable off-road test. A test of the ages versus somebody else's creation. I'm very, very curious to see what Filament has done. Um, so yeah, let's go. Okay, so here is our Land Rover thing in BeamNG, and uh, it looks really darn good in green. The green is a little bit brighter than I was hoping it would be, and the brake lights are jankier than I was hoping they would be, but overall it's looking pretty darn good. And I'm generally just pleased with the way that it has come out uh, in terms of look. Now, one thing I said I was going to do throughout the entire video, whether or not I cut it out, doesn't particularly matter. But I was saying that I was going to make this thing wide and thick and all this with the advanced settings. And then when I got to the end, I was like, man, it looks good as is. I don't even need advanced settings. So maybe what I'll do before our final challenge is widen it just a little bit with the advanced settings. Just, just a little bit extra width, but... Overall, I think it looks really good, so I'm not very concerned about that. <laughs> Let's just take it out for a drive. Uh, it does have a manual gearbox, by the way, um, which I felt was important. And it's also deathly silent. <laughs> it is really, really quiet. Okay, so I'm here on the... Uh, well, this is the... BeamNG grid map v2 because it has a variety of surfaces they're all in close proximity and I don't want to test on the actual map because that doesn't seem very fair so let's just kind of take it off road here and see what there is to offer uh, so far it does feel pretty darn strong I'm not sure what type of off-roading we're going to be doing in this challenge, but you can see just based on the suspension that it's definitely plenty soft enough and bounces around decently. These wheels absorb a lot of uh, heft. <laughs> Obviously, this thing weighs a bunch, but it's bouncing over these rocks like no tomorrow, and I'm kind of down with it. The engine seems to be adequately powerful enough. Definitely not overpowered and definitely not underpowered. This is one of my better design cars and probably the best one I've made this year. Uh, and it will stay that way for a while. It's, it's going to take me a while to top something that can do 150 kilometers an hour this easily. Uh, and also crawl. Okay, so the, the floating test over the rocks is definitely a success. But what about crawling? That is more what I'm interested in here for this challenge. Uh, the radiator seems to be holding up, uh, which is good. I don't remember if I made this thing intercooled or, intercooled or not. I don't think I did, so it's non-intercooled turbos, um, except for the fake intercooler I put out front for show. <laughs> Let's try to crawl up this rocky section here, because rocks are my friend, and this thing has a degree meter. I want to see how high we can get. So low range, lock the rear and the front diffs because we can do that, uh, thanks to automation uh, and the setup that I have. High up in the revs in first gear, I'm actually going to switch to second. It's fast when you want it to be, that's probably too fast. 40 degrees is no problem though, my goodness. Switching down into first and just kind of holding the throttle, which is a mistake in off-roading. 50 degrees and not quite 60. That's <laughs> 60 is a bit of a reach anyway, let's be real. That is insanity, so um, I'm fine with that, goodness. If we attempt to do the same challenge in mud, uh, how are we going to do? That's one thing I'm interested in. No momentum here, we're just going in full-on second gear pull. Similar story, uh, all the way up to 50 degrees. I want to try that in first gear with a little bit more throttle control. We're not building a ton of boost, but uh, we are spinning the wheels, just desperately spinning the wheels. <laughs> Too much spinning, I think it's bringing me down. So one thing about the first gear being extremely short is that our reverse gear is also extremely short. Uh, which is fun. Um, let's rip it out on the uh, textured grass here. I want to see what this will do. Second gear, again, no momentum. 
taking it easy on the grass, 50 degrees, nearly on the 60 degree mark, almost halfway up. <laughs> we blend in too. And on the rough road, one more go, let's see, first gear, just hauling it out, nice and slowly now. How high can we get on just regular road? Up, 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 come on, no slippage. 60 degrees, oh, and then it gives up. <laughs> okay, we found our limit, it's 60 degrees. Guys, in my uh, not so humble opinion, I believe that this thing, just based on those quick tests, is ready to take on the off-road challenge at hand. I'm very excited about it, so let's kick it and see what is in store for us. That'll be coming up now. <laughs> I've, I've gone kind of like full redneck for this because I do know that this track gets pretty, pretty rough. No, I'm excited. I see that it's uh, extremely steep and that's sort of what I was practicing with, so. Fair enough, gotta... fair enough, yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. Seems logical. Yeah, it gets uh, a bit steep and narrow here. <laughs> yeah. I, really. I thought about widening out the track to make it like a lot beefier, and then I remembered that, yeah, this track gets pretty narrow, so. <laughs> no, I was actually gonna go for like a monster truck style, or maybe just make like a second one real quick that was a monster truck, but I didn't end up doing it. I mean, we'll switch after we get past the first big obstacle. Oh no, watch out for that! Oh god! Oh! Oh, if okay. we even oh, get to that first big obstacle, come on now. So how much horsepower did you say you had? 335 horsepower. Um, okay, so you have then, more horsepower than me. Yeah, I don't remember the torque figure, but uh, it was fairly considerable. I was trying to have a decent low end despite having two turbos, but, you know, Fair sometimes enough. the turbos take over and... Uh, Ooh, this is very precarious. <laughs> it is very narrow, so... It's also very bouncy and it wants to chuck me off. No missteps here, otherwise it's death. Oh, I heard a lockup just then. Were you going a bit fast? So the uh, biggest issue with this is it weighs way too much and uh, the brakes are not oh, yeah. even close to good enough. So um, <laughs> th there's no... It's not a race car. It it's not meant to go fast. The brakes I will stop it when we're going slow. brakes on the front of mine. Yeah, same. Ooh! Uh -huh. With race okay. pads, you know how it is. This is very, very narrow. <laughs> this is very narrow. Oh, goodness. Oh, dear. I mean, I can still do it. I haven't even turned my lock lockers on yet. I'm Your, your back seat is right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, wait. You don't have a back seat. That's your front seat. Yeah, no, I have a... I put a bench seat with a column shifter. Yeah, you don't have a bench seat anymore. It's in my hood, actually, right now. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Make it. Alright, I'm gonna have to put on my diff locks now. I'm going low range diff locks. Uh, you put manual locker, I'm assuming. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. S yeah, right. four wheel drive, manual locker. I, I thought that that would be necessary gear for this kind of uh, terrain. I find for this kind of thing, uh, I'm gonna go low range and just in case we'll lock. Oh, this is bad. Oh, no. I hear the engine revving, but I don't see the wheels moving. <laughs> Hold on a minute. I'm coming back. Not too, too much. I'll move back a little bit. So, did you make yours an auto then? Because auto yeah. better off-road. Auto is generally pretty good for off-road, because you can get the stall uh, uh, revs up higher is. before you can let the brake out and stuff like that. <clears> and it <throat> keeps it in power band. True. I, I hear your vehicle like bottoming out a lot. It's very soft suspension um, because yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I figured we'd be doing some off-road stuff and I was kind of right. But it does yeah, bottom do out one. frequently. Yeah, my mine will bash occasionally. But uh, <laughs> yours bashes a lot. And we're finally getting up the mountainside. That was, that is a rough spot. <laughs> Two hits. In a short period of time. You know what? My vehicle's actually dealing with this quite nicely. Yeah, I'm Ooh. not having... Yeah, that's that's the <laughs> same spot. <laughs> Bashed my nose into the ground just <laughs> I didn't even see it until it was too late. <laughs> you bash your nose on that, did you? I'm bashing everything. I specifically put rock sliders on this. I mean, they're made out of exhaust pipes, so they don't actually do anything, but... 
Uh, and they're they're doing their job. If this was real life, you definitely need stuff like that. For yeah. Me. Stop right here, and I'm gonna turn around and watch you uh, deal with that. Well, now that you've signed the uh, the danger of it, I think I'm good. Ooh. It's those unexpected bumps that really throw you for a loop on these sections. Hey, fine, I won't tell you. Oh. <laughs> I'm just gonna listen for the oh. No, no. <laughs> Just gonna listen to the for the uh, cries of fear. I see. I just see the cloud of dust coming up from behind your truck, and then I know that something's <laughs> going down. So if you look almost directly behind us, there's a little bit of a cliff thing with a bit of a dot at the top of it. That's a ramp. That's where we're aiming to get. Oh, so we take the ramp, and then that's that's it. Yeah, the okay. ramp to jump down to our death, the leap of death is the end of the map the leap of death <laughs> so you go through this perilous journey and then you dive off the end and that's it you know i'm kind of impressed that we managed to make some fairly evenly matched vehicles i was a little worried to be kind yeah. of lopsided but uh we're on the same page despite not too many restrictions so that's a good thing yeah i mean the obstacles are getting a little bit tougher but it's not anything that's really that challenging i haven't gone into low range in a while uh so I feel like when I have to put low back on, I know that it's actually going to be something... Never mind, this looks pretty beefy. Yeah, I'm going to oh, stop wow. here and let you get a bit ahead. No, you... You champed that. You I'm did bouncing well. my way up. I thought it was worse than it was. It was a bash. I'm going to attempt a shortcut. Oh dear. Really? <laughs> oh, it <laughs> <did not. laughs> It actually worked. <laughs> I see that shortcut. <laughs> And I think I'm good to not try that. <laughs> it worked. I mean, I took a bit of a hit, but... Uh, ah! That didn't sound good. Don't worry, I rided myself. No! <laughs> oh, Don't worry, I'm fine. on my wheels. Yeah, you look fine. That's that's the end right there. You yeah. see it. And nice. All right, I guess we uh, build some speed and go off it. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly take a look at the damage. It's not that bad overall. Like, I've definitely lived through this treacherous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nothing really changed except the mirrors. Yeah. The uh, the only thing uh, <clears throat> that really happened to your vehicle was the big whoops. Pretty much. It was just bouncy. Well, it uh, it is just bouncy. That has not stopped. Okay. You ready? Yep. It's been nice doing this video with you, bro. All right. Yeah, it's been fun. Three, three, two, one, go. Ooh, you take off much faster. Oh, but then your gear shifts are really slow. Woo! <laughs> yeah, my uh, transmission is very oh, short. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was fine. And slow and motion. Oh! Oh! I splatted hard. Oh, your slow motion. All right. Then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is not recognizable as a car anymore. Yeah, it's flat now. Um, oh, I got stuck! I'm gonna boop over to your car. I can't even tell what's happening to your car. There's like lines coming out. It doesn't... Well, there aren't that many lines for me, but it's... Um, we're going all the way down at this point. It's it's going all yeah, the way. Yeah, it seems that you have beaten me on the... What would you call this? A luge? I'm aiming for the water, come on. Yes! What a jump. Oh, all these ridges make sense now, because it's stuff to run into as you fly into the water. <laughs> and Well, you made it to the water, and I didn't. Well, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> and just to wrap things up, I figure it's a good time to say thank you to those who have chosen to support this channel, as I haven't done it for a while now. Apologies, guys. It doesn't really fit with the shorter videos, but these long ones, I absolutely don't mind taking a minute and, and uh, adding this in. So, Overlord, QT Bear, Terry Williams, J. Pope, Davis Heister, The German Dude, Mickey K1, Sleep64, Sin Lab, it used to be Childer Sin, but I'll go with your new name, uh, Jug MBH, Jared, uh, Goofy Plays, Badger, and Phoenix Shark. Thank you all for your support. I appreciate you guys a lot, and girls as well. And I'll uh, <laughs> see you again soon. More videos coming up. Apologies, this one was a little late. Things happen differently with collabs that I'm not used to, but hey, it's fun. <laughs> See you again soon.